everyone and welcome back to the channel I'm just up in the woods for a for a while today I've got a few jobs to do you can see in the background there I've just brought down a, a nice dead standing pine tree it didn't exactly go where I wanted it to go you can see that clear space in the background and it actually ended up in all those trees behind so that was a bit of a carry-on had to go and get my uh, my stash of uh, blue rope from the back of the truck and then Pull, pull the tree off the stump <laughs> which is always a really kind of dangerous thing to do but um yeah oh, so i think my last video we kind of signed off 2020 looking forward to 2021 it's going to be a better year but here in the uk uh, this year started straight into a three month uh, national lockdown so uh, i'll be coming up here quite a lot i think over the next um few months but um yeah i've got a, a new pan i bought the larger finnish wilderness pan the 30 centimeter one a couple of weeks ago i bought it for myself for christmas i thought i deserved a present um so i'm going to cook up a, a moroccan lamb curry in that this afternoon over the campfire so yeah i'm looking forward to that um i've also bought myself a new coffee percolator I was looking at the Petromax ones, the stainless steel ones, but they were like 60 or 70 pounds and I thought that's a bit steep really. Uh, I looked at the Snow Peak one which was 110 pounds, I thought, Christ, no chance. So I picked up an aluminium one from uh, eBay for 15 quid. <laughs> so I'll give you a look at that actually when it's time for another cup of coffee. I'm currently on the uh, Earl Grey tea at the moment, trying to rehydrate myself a bit. So yeah, I'm just going to go and get my safety glasses from the truck, get my saw horse set up up there, get the chainsaw out and uh, split some firewood for the campfire this afternoon. So um, yeah, I'll see, see you in a while once I get myself sorted. guys we're into the afternoon now I've started to chop some of that wood up and I'm gonna get a, a cup of coffee on using the, uh, the cheap old percolator um yes yeah, so I've just been looking at it it's it says it's a nine cup percolator I have used this before so it's a little bit dirty um, but yeah it's dead lightweight made out of aluminium and I just bought it from a, it's like a, an army surplus store on eBay so I'll put the link below if you fancy picking one up 15 quid um just a standard percolator really you've got a you've got a plastic uh handle on the top there so i just hope that doesn't melt it's actually starting to come out a little bit as well <laughs> um and then inside you've just got a you've just got a standard little percolator bit so you just stick your coffee in there put your water in stick the lid on and whack it on the heat um 
Probably holds about a litre and a half, I think. Just having a look at this plastic thing there. I just need to push them back in. That does turn, actually. Oh, it does screw in and out, I think. I don't know. That's all right. I just hope it doesn't melt, that's all. But, um... I mean, you can pick these up relatively uh, cheaply, but a lot of them don't have the bail, the bail arm on, so you can't hang it over a campfire in the morning. But this one does, so, so I'm quite happy with it. And it's just got a little kind of D-ring there, which you can just pick up and, and pour. Cheap and cheerful. Um, probably not last you a lifetime, but if I have used it on the gas hob, and this is going to be the first time I've used it over a flame, so, uh, so I'm going to get a fire going, actually. It's pretty chilly. We're just a, a couple of minutes in now and we're uh, starting to get some action it's bouncing around like a like a kangaroo that's just about done now so I'm just gonna swing it round off the heat let it cool down for a moment and uh, enjoy the warmth from this fire. Yeah, you can't knock it. Um, I find that the only time I usually boil water when I'm out and about, on a, if I'm backpacking or me canoe or whatever. Um, I, I usually just boil water for coffee so I figured it would make sense to have a, a, a kind of all-in-one coffee machine and the percolator kind of does that for you doesn't it? I mean if you just want to boil water for um, a dehydrated meal or something like that you just take the, the uh, percolator bit out and you've got a, a pot. So um, yeah it's fairly useful especially if there's a few of you. I mean I do use my little bush pot cafeteria but that's, there's only enough for one person in there but um this one fits nine cups which i think in british terms is like three mugs Well, folks, it's getting on a bit. I just thought I'd give you a look at the uh, the larger Finnish wilderness pan. Then, um, if you've watched the channel before, you'll have seen me using the 23 centimeter one, the smaller one. This is the 30 centimeter diameter. It's identical, same um, blue steel or black steel. The handle is detachable. It's just held in there with that little uh, screw. It's a birch handle, so if you if you burn it, it's easily replaced. But um, this is definitely for you know two people upwards the other one's an ideal one person pan but i'm going to do quite a substantial meal for myself and the the good wife uh, this afternoon so i'm having a few problems with the batteries and the cameras actually it's still pretty cold and they're, they're dying fairly quickly so i'm gonna crack on and prepare the food without filming it and then i'll uh, turn the camera back on when i actually get down to cooking i do have a bottle of brown ale um, chilling down there somewhere in the ice so I'm gonna crack that open I think while I wait so the fire is going well I've got the the little grill there on the TGM Metalworks mini fire hanger grill set up and I'll just pop the pan on there uh, it'll just be a, a bit easier I also wanted to just uh, quickly mention about the balls that I'll be using because people often ask when they see these 
They're made by a, a Finnish company called Kapilka. And I think they're made out of a, a kind of um, a wood composite. You can actually burn them when, you, when you're done with them. But they are really useful. Um, I'll put a link below to their website. They're readily available in different shops in the UK. I have uh, the full set. I've got the plates, the balls, the, uh, the cups, which are really nice as well, and the cutlery. Not very lightweight, so they're not ideal for backpacking, but for this type of stuff, they're, they're really nice and they really look the part as well. Well, guys, the food's all prepped, so I'll just take you through what I'm going to do. Uh, I've just got some onion, fresh ginger and garlic, some coriander, some apricot, green olives. I've got the, the Moroccan tagine spice there, Ras El Hanou. Um, and I've got my little JSI spice rack there with salt and pepper in, some smoked paprika and some turmeric. And over here we've got some passata for the sauce, some Greek yogurt and a couple of packs of lamb. I'm not sure if I'll use both of those, but we'll see. So what I'm going to do is uh, fry the onion, ginger and garlic first with the spices in some oil. And then just add the meat, um, add the fruit sauce and then the coriander last i've also got some um some spanish uh, saffron there as well might put a bit of that in why not oh there's my beer um yeah so the fire's still looking good quite pleased with that uh, the light is starting to fade so i'll probably kind of crack on and get this food on right so First things first, I'm going to get that onion in there. I'm going to get the ginger in there as well. And the garlic. Add the spice in as well. So I've got the Rassel Hanou. Um, I haven't got a spoon so I'm just going to kind of estimate. Probably a teaspoonful there I would have thought. And I've got the handy little GSI spice rocket which has different compartments in here. So on the top I've got some smoked paprika. Get a bit of that on. On the other side, some turmeric, some of that in there. Then on the bottom, I've got salt and pepper. Just get a bit of pepper on. A touch of salt. Swig of ale for the chef. The onions, the uh, garlic and the ginger are cooked. You can see the pan there as well, it's uh, you know, beautifully non-stick. Right, let's get the meat in. Just gonna drop that in there. So there's just a couple of lamb chops here. Oh, sorry, the lamb leg steaks, they are actually. So the next step here folks is to get this uh, get this passata in. You could use chopped tomatoes but you get a lovely kind of thick consistency with the with the passata. Now I'm also gonna get my dried apricots in there as well. the olives so it's just a pinch of saffron going in there not too much mind because it's worth its weight in gold
Well folks, that footage was filmed a few days ago. Uh, the battery ran out and it's just about to run out again. It's so cold up here. Um, but I was able to warm it up in my pocket a little bit to film the, the night shots. So uh, I just wanted to talk about the pan a little bit. To cut a long story short, that meal that I cooked ended up taking the, uh, the factory seasoning off the pan because the passata was way too acidic. Um, I am aware that that does happen on, on mineral pans. Um, so if you do have one of these pans or you buy one new, I would avoid uh, something like passata or even tomatoes until it's got a really uh, good level of seasoning on it. I mean, it's cosmetic. I've, uh, I've been cooking on this all week long. I've had it in the, the oven, the roast potatoes on, and you know, so it is just cosmetic, but it doesn't look so great now. Never mind. Um, so anyway, before this battery dies, I'm just going to say thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you again in the next one.